Hello everybody, welcome back to my stream. Uh, sorry, it's uh, been like two weeks since I, I last did this uh, Marvel Mondays open spoiler discussion on the latest episode of whatever Marvel show is on Disney Plus right now, which at the moment is the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, so I missed episode one and two because, um, you know, Sometimes things happen, and uh, despite me no longer ma lacking the motivation to stream, um, um, you know, I can still lack the energy to stream, and, and things can get to the point where by the time I feel ready to stream, it's already like 11 o'clock like it is now, and um, yeah, and I don't like streaming late at night, so I just end up uh, not streaming altogether. Granted, I, I could have done um, the discussions as videos instead, but, you know, then it came to a point where I felt like, you know, by the time I would get the video out, it would be, you know, close to when the next episode would be coming out, and thus it would feel like it's too late to come out with the next episode. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. So what I'm going to do tonight is, uh, instead I'm just going to talk about um, all three episodes, since I missed the first two. And, you know, I'm just going to go off the cuff, you know, off the top of my head, you know, do my best to just talk about, you know, my thoughts on, on these on these first three episodes um, with no script, nothing planned. Uh, I'm extremely ill prepared for um, this stream right now. Um, but, you know, that, that that's just the way things go sometimes. OK, you know, like I said the last time I was gonna stream, which was a few nights ago, that no matter what happens, I was gonna stream tonight, and <laughs> it's getting close to midnight, so as long as I start the stream while it's still Monday, you know, then I'm keeping my promise. Although, you know, different time zones and everything, you could say technically I still streamed on Monday if you're living on the West Coast, and it is Monday for me, but, you know, that's whatever. Anyway, let, let's get into a talking about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, because um, there is actually a lot to talk about, although not as much as WandaVision, because um, with WandaVision, it was very much like a uh, mystery uh, show. You know, part of the appeal of that show was uh, not knowing um, what was going on exactly and trying to guess, you know, who was behind everything and what was really going on and everything, you know, like... Especially after a certain point, there was nothing on the show that you could, uh, take at face value. Um, it's, uh, it was very, yeah, so that's, so that's what the appeal of WandaVision was. Um, that's very much not the case with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. There's no, like, uh, mystery going on exactly. Well, I suppose you could, um, you know, consider, you know, where the Super Soldiers came from to be to be a mystery, but that got solved, um, pretty quick, um, so, so yeah, it, it's not like, you know, a main theme of the show or whatever, it's very much, um, what you see is what you get in Falcon and Winter Soldier is what I'm trying to say, you know, it's not really a mystery that there's no, like, uh, yeah, it, <laughs> that there's really nothing to, to speculate about, it, it, it's just, it's pretty straightforward, you know, more your your standard type of thing from what you could expect from Marvel. So, yeah. Really, um... The most that, that you could talk about with, with the show is, um... The new characters that the show introduces and, um... What they're being... What their introduction could mean for the MCU going forward. Um, so... For the time being, that's what I'm mostly going to be talking about. You know, the new characters introduced in the show and, uh who they are, and, and um, anything else that, that might be, uh, that might uh, have a larger impact on the MCU as a whole. So, um, although there are other things that, that have, have happened in the show as well, so I will be talking about those as well. For example, um, one of the, um, okay, so in the very first episode, you know, it, the show pretty much opens with an action sequence, you know. We, we see the Falcon 
going on a mission and uh he's like trying to it's like a, a hostage situation where, where planes got hijacked or whatever and uh you know he uh, has to fight back against the terrorist group and, and you know save the hostages and, or and, and stop the plan and uh it turns out that they're being led by uh, Batroc the Leaper, who actually was um, one of the villains that Cap fought at the beginning of Captain America the Winter Soldier. Now, um, I was actually surprised to hear, or, or rather to see, that, that, that Batroc came back, because I did hear a rumor last year that, that um, he supposedly w was going to come back on this show, but uh, I don't typically believe in rumors or leaks or anything like that, you know. If it's not official information, then I don't believe or, or, or trust in it, you know? So, um, so yeah, I had my doubts that that bad truck would return. It was certainly a possibility, but again, until I saw it for myself, I, I wasn't about to believe it. So, um, I was very much uh, surprised and also very happy to, to see him make his return on this show. And not, not only did he come back, he, he was the very first villain revealed on the show in the very first fight scene at the beginning of the very first episode, you know, so they wasted no time reintroducing his character, so that very much caught me by surprise. Um, and uh, also, um, so I, I want to say that because Batroc has a, a, a mustache, a very recognizable Wario-like mustache, in 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 the uh, in the comics, uh, I, I kind of wish that they would have taken advantage of the fact that it's been so long since we've seen him. That you know he decides to let a mustache grow out so he could look more like he does in the comics. But I, I'm guessing that at that point he'd be too unrecognizable. Uh, you know, so yeah, I imagine that they want to keep him looking the same as he did in, in the, the Winter Soldier movie, so that way people w would you know, be able to recognize him as, hey, that's the guy that, that kept fought on the ship in, in The Winter Soldier. So, so yeah. It was very awesome to, to, to see him again. And, uh, of course, he, he, he didn't die, because why would they, you know, introduce this character just to kill him off immediately? But, uh, yeah, as I always say, any, any Marvel villain that, that doesn't die, you know, uh, is being set up to, to return again. So, We'll see whether or not if we, we see him again on this show or anything else, you know, in the future. Um, I doubt he's going to come back on the show, but certainly um, they, they might have plans for him to, to appear elsewhere. And uh, regardless of whether he may come back, I, I'm looking forward to his return once again. So, I mean, he's one of Cap's most famous villains, so... You know, it'd be a waste to, to, for them to not utilize this character again, especially now that they brought him back and whatnot. But yeah, after that, um, the, the, the first episode gets... Um, it, it's basically ju just setting up, you know, what the rest of the show is going to be like, you know, showing us where, where Sam and his family have been, you know, um, since the snap happened and, um, you know going through the struggles that they're going through because of that, and, um, uh, it's, excuse me, it's, um, it feels very much like what's actually going on in the real world with the pandemic, at least that's how it feels to me, you know, because, you know, you got people who, you know, they lost their jobs, you know, they're at risk of getting kicked out of their homes, you know, struggling to afford food, you know, and, you know, Sam not being able to get a loan for a bank, even though he he meets all of their qualifications, you know, and and being denied anyway, you know, that that feels very much like like things that actually happen in the real world because they do. So, you know, it's things like that are very relatable, and, and I actually really like that that they 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 show things that that people can relate to. It, in the show, you know, it's not just, you know, all action and, and things like that. There's actually, you know, they're showing very relatable things on the show, and, and I like that. And um, then we also ha have, you know, where, where Bucky's been, you know, since the since we last seen him. And apparently he's been pardoned um, 
for, for all the things he did as the Winter Soldier, but he has to follow certain guidelines in order to, to keep his uh, freedom and whatnot. So, um, you know, one of them is meeting with a counselor, and another is, um, you know, he, he has to basically work for the government and, and, and follow their rules. Like, he can't hurt anyone. He has to... Like, like he has his own set of rules. They, they state them in the show and whatnot. And, um... There, there's this, um... Uh, side plot that, um... You know, there's other things going on at the moment, so they, they haven't really touched on it, um... since, um... this was first brought up, but, um... Apparently, he's having nightmares about this one mission that he did, um, back when he was the Winter Soldier, of course. And, um, you know, one of the, the, the people he killed was uh, somebody who, you know, he, it wasn't his job to kill them, but they were a witness to what he was doing, so he had to kill them anyway. And um, one of his, his neighbors in the apartment building that he lives in, you know, is actually the father of this person this innocent person that he's killed, you know, and, um, you know, he so he's having nightmares about that, and he knows who th this person is talking about when they talk about their dead son, but he can't say anything about it, because, you know, what would, what would have happened if he were to know, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I I'm pretty sure they're not just gonna drop this, like, it's gonna come back up eventually, but at the moment they're dealing with, um, more important things, but I'm, I'm sure it's something that'll that'll come up eventually, you know, when, when Sam and Bucky return to um, the U.S. <clears throat> but that's getting ahead of myself. Um, okay, so the, the main villains of the show um, is this group called the Flag Smashers. Now, the Flag Smashers, the group, is actually based off of a character, a villain in the comics, called the Flag Smasher. And, uh, you know, his, you know, his motivations and, and, you know, what he's about is basically, you know, like, the same or similar thing to the, um, the, this group in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, you know, they, 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 they want a unified world without borders and, and, and whatnot, you know, but, but they have, you know, violent means of achieving those ends, so... So yeah, um, it's a very interesting thing to, to see them do, like, like instead of um, having the character be in the show, they have a group based off the character instead. It is possible that, you know, we might actually see um, the, the Flag Smasher, the character, you know, show up on the show, you know, as a member of the group, or even the leader, although I think... Um, you know, the, the leader has already been introduced, um, I forgot what her name was, but, but yeah, still, I, I think it's, it's possible that, I, I forgot what this guy's name is, so hang on, let me look this up real quick. Okay, so his real name is Carl Montague, or, or yeah, I, I'm probably not saying that that name right, but but yeah, if you hear that name um in the show, then it's um then yeah, it, it's him. It, it it's the flag smasher. But but yeah, that that's who the group is based off of. Um, so. Oh yeah. Okay. So so, it, it's as I thought. Um, so the leader of the the group of the Flag Smashers is her name is Carly Montague. So it's basically a, a gender flipped version of of, of the character. Um, so oh, that's actually that's actually very interesting. Um, 
I, I should have realized that before. Oh, whatever. So anyway, so yeah. That, that's, uh... That, that... Actually, the, the way they introduced her character is very interesting. Because, um, in episode two, you know, Sam, Sam and Bucky go on a mission to, to see where the Flag Smashers are heading to next, and they, they, they follow this, um, you know, they're at, a, they're at a warehouse and they're loading a truck, and, and um, you know, Sam ha has, uh, his robotic bird partner, Red Wing, has, you know, x-ray vision, so they're able to see inside of the truck that they're loading up, and, um, they have what appears to be a hostage, um, but then when, when Bucky gets on board the truck, you know, as it's getting away, he, he opens it up and, and looks inside, and he sees the supposed hostage, but it's not. It's actually the leader of the Flag Smashers. Of course, we don't know that, that it's her at the time. It, we just, you know, she, she pretends to be a hostage, and, and it turns out she's one of them. And then, of course, we, we now know that, that she's actually the leader of the group. Um, so, it's, um, so yeah, a and, oh, yeah, so, see, this is, this is why, um, uh, doing this without a script is a bad idea. <laughs> I I'm getting ahead of myself, I I'm, I'm talking all over the place, and, and <laughs> I'm thoroughly unfocused. So, at the end of the first episode, um, <laughs> Yo, what's up, Wegra? Thanks. Um, yeah, uh, 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 of course, you know, it, it's Marvel Monday night, and, and of course it's this shirt that I'm wearing to, to stream. But yeah, nice to see you. You haven't missed much. I, I was just talking about, um, you know, the, the villains of the show that, that have been introduced so far. Um, uh, so... Uh, since, since you just missed it, uh, I'll, I'll quickly re restate what I just said. Um, so, the group, you know, the, the main villains of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the Flag Smashers, is actually based off of an individual character in the comics called The Flag Smasher. And the leader of the Flag Smashers in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier is actually a gender-flipped version of um, the Flag Smasher individual character in the comics. So... Yeah, in the comics it's a guy, but on the show it, it's a girl. So, yeah, it's a very different take on, on the character. I mean, just the fact that you know they, they they took you know an individual character and made a whole group out of what he what he was about is a, a very different take on a character already. But you know, then to also change the gender of the character um, himself, it also uh, is a very dramatic uh, change of pace from what's in the comics as well so um so that's who the, the flag smashers are and um i also talked about batrock but i more or less just restated what, what we talked about you know the other night yeah that they, they also did that with the ancient one as well and, and um and um well um i'm not sure if you, you've seen that movie so so uh, i'm not going to say but but they, they they did they also did it in in, in another movie. Um, I'm not sure which which ones you, which ones you which movies you you've seen. So uh, you know if you haven't seen it yet, I'm not going to spoil it. But uh, yeah, there, there's another character that that they did that with. Um, if you haven't heard, so yeah. Um, it's all a good chunk. All right, so so you should, should so you should know uh, basically most of what I'm talking about then. Um, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I, I was talking about the Flag Smashers, and, and I got ahead of myself, because uh, I'm, uh, I'm not, uh, normally I have notes for, for, for when I do these sort of streams, but tonight, um, I'm, I'm more or less going off the top of my head, so I'm extremely unprepared for this, so, you know, I, I ended up, uh, skipping ahead to episode two while I was still talking about episode one, and, uh, Completely forgot to mention that um, at the end of episode one, you know, they introduce who the new Captain America is going to be. Um, because despite the fact that um, Steve uh, passed his shield down to Sam, Sam felt like he couldn't live up to being Captain America. So 
he decided to retire the shield instead. But, you know, I, I guess the president or whoever in, in the MCU decided that America needs a Captain America. So, excuse me, they uh, brought on John Walker to, to be the new Captain America. And um, John Walker in the comics is U.S. agent. So, yeah, U.S. agent is... Uh, you know, in pretty much in the MCU now. And um, if you don't know who U.S. Agent is, he, he's not necessarily the bad or evil Captain America. He He's basically, you know, more or less a, a brute force, ruthless um, type of, of, of Captain America. Like, like a no-holds-barred, you know, will, willing to be far more violent and, uh, you know, like the Punisher, basically, like like he's willing to kill people, whereas Captain America usually isn't. Yeah, he 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 was an assistant in Marvel vs. Capcom, and he's also a uh, pallet squad character, so to speak, um, in Marvel Superheroes uh, vs. Uh, Street Fighter, which is actually uh, where he first appeared in a video game. At least I'm pretty sure he that that's what his first appearance in a video game was. <laughs> it, it's kind of funny how how you know. He, he, there he was, you know, years ago, and now here, here we are, you know, talking about him again because he's in a in a major TV show that, that's part of a bigger cinematic universe. You no, know, it, it, it's crazy how how things work out, you know, in, in the future. Uh, but uh, yeah. Um, have you seen episode three? But by, by the way, of the show, because I know you said you you were gonna work on that. Um, <laughs> I hope you've seen it by now because I'm going to be getting into that uh, pretty soon. Um, there's uh, there's one other character that, 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 I, that I do have to talk about uh, before I start discussing episode uh, 3, though. And it's another character that was introduced in episode 2. This one's not a villain, though. Um, uh, so... So after... Um, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. And, and there's also... Uh, U.S. agent's um, partner. Um, be, be, because, you know, Steve had, you know, Bucky and, and uh, you know, you know, they Steve's not around anymore, so, so they had a replacement Captain America. They also have a, a replacement, you know, partner for, for Cap as well. And uh, so in the comics, um, you know, when you... When you bleh, when U.S. agent took over as Captain America, you know, he had his best friend, you know, who, who was also black, uh, be his partner. And originally he was also called Bucky, but he eventually changed his name to Battlestar, which is the name that um, John Walker's friend is, is using in, in, in the TV show. And uh, But that's not the character that, 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 that I said I was going to talk about. The, the character that I said I was going to talk about is actually... Um, uh, Isaiah Bradley, who is uh, the old man living in that house that, that that Bucky wanted to talk to, because they were trying to figure out, you know, wh where the, this new batch of super soldiers came from, and they didn't have any leads, so Bucky figured, you know, he's the only other super soldier that he knows of, so, you know, that's of course who he's going to talk to. Now, uh, I don't know um, exactly... Well, Isaiah's history in the MCU is going to be, but in the comics, um, the way it happened is um, after uh, Captain America got frozen in ice, um, he was presumed to be dead. So they tried to recreate Captain America, basically. And what they did was they took a hundred different Black Americans and experimented on them to to see if they could, you know, recreate Captain America, and, and you know. Only a few of them survived, but Isaiah is the one that ultimately ended up surviving the entire ordeal and was basically the replacement Captain America. And uh, he, he did, uh, I think he did actually end up saving the country, but, you know, what they ended up doing was, you know, they, they, they locked him away for 15 years in, in, instead, although in the MCU, it, it seems like they, they locked him up for 30 years because that's what he said. You know, like I said, I'm not sure what his history in the MCU is going to be, but I imagine it was pretty similar uh, to what happened in the comics. Um, and, and then there's, you know, more details, you know, to that um, that, that we learn later on in, in, in episode um, three. 
Now, um, Isaiah being introduced in the MCU can actually uh, be a hint towards uh, something else that is potentially being built up to in the MCU. Because um, if you're, you know, a super soldier or whatnot, and you have kids, then, you know, those super soldier genes are going to be passed down to your offspring. So if the kid that was living with Isaiah is his son, then that means that um, if, if Marvel plans to do a Young Avengers show or movie uh, in the MCU, then, then that kid is, is probably going to end up being Patriot in the Young Avengers. But, uh, you know, that, that's, that's a what if. That, that's, you know, we have to wait and see if that actually ends up happening. Although if, <laughs> if Marvel ends up uh, announcing that um, a Young Avengers show or movie is coming, then, then you can definitely expect him to, to show up as a member of that team. So, yeah, that, that's actually a, a big thing if, if that's what they're, they're building up to. Um, and I, I'm trying to think. I, I'm pretty sure that that's all the new characters that are introduced in, in Episode 2. And then lastly, um, you know, if you haven't seen Episode 3 yet, then, then you might want to tune out now and, and uh, come back when, when the YouTube video is, is up. Uh, since this is the part where I talk about Episode 3, and thus I'm going to spoil it for you if you haven't seen it already. So, in Episode 3, you know... Episode 2 ends with Sam and Bucky no closer to figuring out where the super soldiers came from. And um, since Bucky is... Ah, okay. If you say so, then... So yeah, Episode 2 ends with, with Bucky suggesting that they break Zemo out of jail um, because he's the only one that, that would know enough about Hydra to, um, you know, uh, potentially give them a lead on... on where to find out where the new super soldier serum came from. So, they go see Bucky, and, and I actually like... God. They go see Zemo. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Bucky and Sam go to see Zemo, and um, uh, Bucky says to, to, um, to see Zemo by himself, because uh, he... Because, you know... Oh, you saw episode three? Okay. So, so, um, so yeah, um, Bucky says that he wants to see Zemo by himself because, you know, Zemo's whole, uh, thing is he, he doesn't believe that superheroes exist. I mean, he is the guy who is behind Civil War, after all. So, um, he decides to, um, see Zemo by himself, and I actually like, um, the interactions that they have with one another, you know, because... You know, as soon as Bucky walks in the cell, Zemo starts saying the words that um that Hydra used to uh you know mind control him, and uh, of course they don't work because um you know the treatment that he got in Wakanda, part of it was uh, getting rid of his uh, Hydra programming, and uh, so basically um some pe I guess some people might have speculated that that Bucky might still be under the Hydra mind control, and all it took was just the words to get it to activate it. But this scene 100% confirmed that, um, no, Bucky is 100% completely mind control free now. So, um, so yeah, um, so yeah, they have that meeting, and, um, you know, Zemo says, I just wanted to see how the new you would react to the old words, and, um, <laughs> Without telling Sam, Bucky arranges a plan to, to break Zemo out of jail. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I like how, how they show the, the whole process playing out and whatnot. And, um, you know, they, they basically show that, that um, you know, because Zemo is a baron, that he's been rich this whole time, you know, they, they get on this, a jet and, and you know, you know, Zemo basically tells them what they know, but, but says that, you know, in order to get more information, that they're going to have to go to Madripoor. Now, now Madripoor is, um, you know, one of the most dangerous places on Earth, basically, you know, in Marvel Comics. And I imagine it's the same um, in the MCU at, at, as well. And, and we saw that, 
you know, pretty much in, um, <laughs> in, in, in episode three, because, uh, they, they go to this place to, to meet this person. And, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it's one of the, it's, it's one of the islands where, where like, like X-Men go to, to like hide, hide and stuff like that. Um, but, um, since, since mutants haven't been introduced yet, um, I don't think we're, we're going to see any, um, especially since, um, we've more or less, um, we've more or less come and gone now, um, you know, in, in this episode. So unless we, we, we go back, um, there's uh, probably not going to be any chance that we might see a, a hint at, at, at the X-Men or, or mutants or whatever. Uh, but certainly now that they have established uh, that Magipore exists in the MCU, there's always a, a chance for it to, to come back later. And, and, you know, we can get some mutants introduced, you know, through there. Um, but, uh, yeah... The, the fact that we're seeing Magipore for the first time it, it is a big deal in the uh, for the MCU uh, because of that. So, um, uh, um, oh yeah, <laughs> okay. So, so there was actually one other character that that we we didn't see them in episode two, um, but but they were mentioned by name, and, and they're pretty much who who they're looking for now uh, at this point in the show. Um, so, the, the the person who apparently uh, supplied the, the super soldier serum is, is a guy named the Power Broker, and in the comics, the Power Broker is, is a guy who, who like, you know, pays people to, to, to give them superpowers and participate in, in, in fighting tournaments and whatnot, you know, and, and that's part of uh, the origin of U.S. agents um, in the MCU, you know, like, like he, he, he was basically paid to be given superhuman strength and, and participate in a, in a tournament and then would later go on to be a U.S. agent, you know? So um, we haven't seen who the power broker is yet uh, in the MCU. They, they, they've just been mentioned by name. Um, but, you know, his introduction in, in, in the show is, you know, another one of those things that, that can lead, lead to bigger things down the line, you know, so... So yeah, um, so yeah, uh, they're, so they're looking for the power broker, and uh, they go to Madripoor because it, there's a, a, apparently a very important person in Madripoor named Selby. Excuse me. Who, um, you know, they, they they basically set up this whole thing, you know, to to try to to get go and see her. Um, I'm not sure if, if Selby is is somebody. From the comics or whatnot, I didn't uh, do that much research on, on episode three just yet. But um, you know, they, they basically have um, they, they they so Zemo has Bucky pretend to be that he's still under Hydra's mind control, and they have Sam pretend to be uh, somebody called Smiling Tiger. You know, as, as part of this whole uh, ploy to um, get information from Selby about the Power Broker and where the Super Soldier Serums came from. And then um, <laughs> Sam gets a call on his cell phone, and um, you know that ends up blowing his cover, and uh, so they got to make a run for it, and they actually end up getting saved by Sharon, who you know we last saw in Captain America: Civil War, and we actually haven't seen her since then as well. So you know, and and she explains, you know, you know she has she. she She's been on the run, you know, ever since the the events of that movie. Like, like she she's pretty much been in Magiport the, the entire time, and and not even her own family knows. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so she's from Captain America: Civil War, you know, and uh, she she helps them, you know, find out where where the Super Soldier Serum came from by basically tracking down. Um, the scientist who made it, and it's the same guy who uh, did the experiments uh, uh, on the the people who, uh, you know, that that basically where Isaiah came from. You know, he's the same scientist from in the comics. You know, so um, you know, so they they talk to him. You know, get the information from him, um, and then 
once they learn everything that they they need to know, <laughs> Zemo, you know, ends up killing him because, of course, why wouldn't he? You know, he doesn't want superheroes to exist, so of course he's going to kill the guy who's responsible for creating uh, more super soldier serums. So, yeah, he 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 does that. You know, even though you know Sam warns him, you know, you don't make a move without us telling you to, but. You know, of course, they, they still need Zemo to uh, get information uh, on, you know, where the power broker is and whatnot. So they can't send him back to prison just yet. So um, I forgot where it is that they, that they go um, after all of this. But, uh, yeah, what, what ends up happening after that is um, they end up somewhere and, and Sam and Zemo go into a building. But Bucky says he has to go for a walk. And... Uh, he ends up meeting with uh, someone from Wakanda who says that they're there for Zemo. And of course they are um, because, you know, Zemo is the guy, and they mentioned this on the show, he's the guy who, who killed uh, King T'Chaka and, and framed Bucky for it. So since uh, Zemo is the one who um, actually killed uh, King T'Chaka, of course the Wakandans are going to want to, you know, capture him themselves and, and you know, if not, you know, <laughs> pass judgment on him, you know, at, at the very least, put him on trial uh, for for what he did. You know, of, of, of course, you know, it, it's no longer a mystery as to who really did it, hence why they're after him. So I, I'm guessing, you know, there's there's going to be like, like a, a double cross situation going on where, you know, Bucky promised it to, to get Zemo out of prison, but they also, um, you know, you know, on the side, it, you know, made a deal with the Wakandans telling him what's going on. And, you know, once all this is over, you can have Zemo. <laughs> but of course, I'm sure Zemo has something up his sleeve himself and, and you know, is more than likely to uh, double cross a Sam and Bucky, you know, or, or pull some shit of his own, you know, what, what, once, you know, he's done with them and, and has accomplished everything he's wanted to, you know. So it, it, it's going to be very interesting to see, uh, you know, how, how this show ends, um, you know, <laughs> it's going to be, uh, very tense to say the least, um, so yeah, um, I'm not sure if, if we're actually going to see, uh, Chadwick Boseman, uh, perf do a post Thomas performance as T'Challa on the show, you know, assuming that, um, you know, Zemo does end up being a prisoner in Wakanda or whatever. But, um, you know, because, you know, he, he died last year and I'm not sure whether or not if they actually managed to shoot any footage that would have required him for that, you know, if that's where the show ends up going. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll see, you know, it, certainly the, the way things ha have played out so far ha have made it very interesting. And, uh, you know, we, we barely got to see, you know, U.S. Agent and Battlestar in, in episode three. And, and certainly with the way um, uh, John reacted to, to getting spat on in episode three, you, you can tell that that being Captain America is going to his head. And we're going to see um, act more like U.S. Agent um, in a later episode, if not the next one for sure, you know, like, like you're, you're going to be able to, to fully see, you know, and understand what I mean when I say um, that that U.S. agent is more of an anti-hero uh, Captain America ra rather than straight up hero, you know. So uh, if there's any questions that, that, that you have, um, I'll, I'll gladly be willing to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, because there wasn't really much uh, for, for me to talk about since um, this wasn't like uh, the show is not like WandaVision. It, it, it's more or less what you see is what you get. And um, th there are things to, to talk about and, and things that are being hinted at for, for the future of the MCU. But, you know, a big p a part of WandaVision's appeal was the fact that the whole show was a mystery and you couldn't really take anything at, at face value. So... You know, th this show doesn't have um, the same thing going for it, but it's still very, very much a, a very good show. So, you know, I've been enjoying it so far. But, um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, this would uh, normally uh, be the end of the stream, you know, for these discussion nights. But um, 
since this didn't end up being as long as, you know, when I was talking about WandaVision, um, I actually have something else uh, planned for what I'm going to do uh, for the rest of the stream. Um, so, uh, yeah, feel free to ask me anything while I go ahead and go get that set up.